today we're going to be talking about how to index match um, instead of doing things like a VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, etc. Um, so let's get started. Right, the first thing that we're going to need is um, a table of information that we're trying to get from a data source. Um, so in this example, I've just got a handful of products and the descriptions, um, and then a list of things that I am looking to get out of my data set. So we want to be looking for um, the quantity, the cost, the COGS, um, pricing, um, any discounts, and the total sale, uh, or total sales. Um, so the first thing that most people tend to do is they, they go to a VLOOKUP, they go equals VLOOKUP um, and they look up a reference here and they go to our, their data source um, sorry, B all the way across here and then they say okay well I want quantities, that's one, two, three um, third column and then they want it to be uh, false the exact match. Uh, what have I done wrong? Double uh, entry there, uh, and then false. Okay. Uh, right. So now we can see that um, this formula pulls back quantity five for the first product in our group here, and they pull it down, and so forth. They might try to pull it across, realize that now it doesn't work. Um, and I'll look at this and then okay well we need to anchor in our um, reference points, our columns here need to be anchored in, um, it's the third column false right so now this should be the same all the way across um, and then they'll be looked to change the column count every single time right so it'll be four there um, maybe that's a five uh, and so forth right um, and it's quite easy to do, it's a pretty basic um, function within Excel um, but it's full of problems um, so in creating this as well you know it's quite easy to see that you have to edit each one um, to adjust for those column counts um, etc. So instead of doing uh, something like a VLOOKUP we turn to um, a couple of nested functions right so we, we look at uh, a match function and an index function. Um, for me personally, I tend to write formulas a bit backwards or from the middle out. Um, it's probably the easiest way to, to describe it. Um, so to start with, I would look at creating a match function. And what the match function actually does is it takes your, your lookup value. Um, so in this case, our A2 um, SKU code. And it will find the the where it is in column B of our data set, um, and return the row number in which it actually sits into. Um, so an exact match on that. So to start with, we in a similar way to a VLOOKUP, we have our lookup uh, value, the range in which it's going to be found, which has to be the column in which it's going to be found. Um, and then we want it to be an exact match, right? So not too dissimilar to a VLOOKUP, only it's not pulling back the result that you want, it's pulling back the row number. And it's quite an important um, to just remember that that is what the match function is doing. Um, now, with this, you then be, okay, well, what, what good is a, a row number? Well, we're going to now index that row number. So at the beginning of our formula, we would put the index formula, right? So now it just looks like index match, right? So we're going to index, and there's three parts to this. Um, the first one is the um, data that you're trying to actually bring back, which is what they call the array, the row number, which is the, the match function that we've already created, and then um, an optional column number at the end. And the reason that it's optional is it depends on your scenario. Um, so I'll run through a couple of different ways of doing this. So to start with, we're just going to use the two criteria. Um, the column that we're going to reference uh, to bring back our results and our row number. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do here is now we have index, we want the array. The array, because uh, we're in our, our quantity column, is going to be the quantity 
in our data set. Um, so that would be column D. Okay, so the entire column D. Um, and then hit the comma, and then our row number is our match function. Match, match function. Um, so you press enter on that, and yes, we want the added parentheses at the end, and there we go. So now it's going to find every one of these SKU codes in column B and get the row number for them. And then it's going to bring back the results of that row number that are in column D. Okay, so if I pull that down, these are the quantities that were sold for row 30, uh, 31, and etc. etc. Right? Um, so if we go down here, we can see 5, 3, 7, 2, 8, 6, 4, etc. Um, 5, 3, 7, 8, 2, 8, 6, 4. Um, so that's the most basic way of um, creating a index match. Now it gets more interesting when you actually add the column reference at the end. Um, so at the moment this is pretty much acting in exactly the same way that a VLOOKUP would, right? So um, it's basically matching your results in the first column as your reference um, and then you're counting the columns across. So I find this actually is actually a little bit easier than a VLOOKUP because it has less moving parts. You don't have to worry about uh, making sure that your lookup value is in exactly the right column and then everything that you're trying to bring back in a VLOOKUP has to be on the right of that index. Uh, sorry, the right of your lookup value. Uh, with the match and index, it, it doesn't matter where your index values are. They could be on the right, and what you're trying to pull back is actually on the left. Um, so in, in essence, it's just a little bit easier, um, quicker to do, um, etc. Right. Now, it gets more interesting when what you want to do is actually pull back multiple columns. Um, and you can do this by creating an additional match function. Um, so to start with, actually I'm going to start a new one, right? So we'll do match, and we want the first thing to be the row. Um, so we're going to match our SKU code within column B, and we're going to get an exact match, right? An exact match of that record. Now we're going to whilst we do this, put some anchors in place because we do not want our um, unique identifiers and our matching criteria to actually move as we adjust our formulas across um, different columns and different rows. Um, so what I've done here is I've actually put a dollar sign um, just in front of the A and not in front of the number and I've put um, dollar signs and anchors in front of the letters for our uh, entire column reference within our match function, right? Um, and what that will allow us to do is actually copy this down and it's going to adjust which version of this it's looking at uh, or what, which, ver which row reference it's looking at within all of column B constantly. And that means I can pull it this way and it's always going to be looking at A uh, at column A and whatever row that particular formula sits. Okay, and it's important to do that. The next part of this that I'm going to do is put the index in. Okay, and this time we're going to have a slightly different approach to it. This time we're going to select the entire sheet that we're doing, so we're going to bring back. That means um, no matter what column the uh, the data that is in um, we'll always be able to find it and bring it back in to our results um, rather than saying um, a could be lookup for example would be between a and column M uh, or between B and O and, and stuff and stuff like that so this basically just then bulletproof it, in essence it's going to be everything within your sheet um, so we're indexing everything and we're going to find whatever is in our row number, right? So this matching um, our unique ID in column B, so we know that's row 30, um, but we're indexing everything. So, so so far Excel does not know what column within row 30 to bring back. So this formula as it stands currently would fail. So we need to add an additional 
layer, um, which would be in the, the optional column reference. Okay. Um, so in this scenario, we want another match function. And this time, we want to go back to our sheet one, and we want to highlight our um, header. Okay, so we know that's costs in this scenario. Then we want to create a uh, sorry hit comma, and I'll look up array for our match function. So if I just remove that, make that a little bit cleaner. Um, so we're going to match our header in our sales data row one which contains all of our headers okay and then we want that to be an exact match again like we did before and then we'll close that off with a bracket and um, we'll put a couple of dollar signs in this time we want it to move the column but we don't want it to move the rows so we'll put the dollar signs in front of all of the numbers in this scenario here um, and now if we just have a quick look at this formula, we need to um, make sure that we put dollar signs in front of our index as well, because we do not want our index to move. Okay, so we're going to index and bring back the array of everything that's in our sales data from row one through to one million. Okay, then our row number brings back our SKU code and which row it sits in. And then our third match will bring back our column reference, which will be whatever column number our headers are in our data table. And if we press enter on that, we'll just add the additional parentheses at the end. And now we have a result. And I can just copy this up and down this data table, and it's always going to work. However, this is where it gets really interesting. Because we have selected the entire um, data to bring into our index, and we know that our um, lookup values are in different rows within our data set, and because of this last little formula, the last match we have, we know what column number each of our headers are in. We can now pull this formula to the right and we can go and copy that all the way down and that will bring back all of the results. Also, because of the way that this is structured out, we can also go left. So our basic index match formula is now slightly more complex and we can still pull it down, we'll get the same results, but this basically means that we can go left, right, up and down and as long as our headers are inside our data source and our unique row IDs are also inside our data source, we'll always be able to pull back the results. And this is quite important with the differences between like VLOOKUPs and um, index and matching. Because if you um, had a data source that was in a different workbook, a different document saved onto a SharePoint drive or um, some kind of shared network, where other people can access it and mess around with it and things like that. Um, if someone were to add a blank column into your data source without you knowing it, um, and you had a VLOOKUP in a different document, say on your C drive, that pulled back those various results from shared documents, um, all of a sudden your VLOOKUPs could be looking at the wrong information because it if someone's put in an additional column and you were counting five columns, then actually you'll only be pulling back something that's now the fourth column. Um, or they might even have knocked out completely your results uh, or your data out of the table that you were looking into. Um, so the main difference and the main reason I don't use VLOOKUPs is primarily that. Um, with a index and match, however, or an index match match, as long as those headers are in that document, and as long as your row references are in that document, you'll bring back the results regardless, um, regardless of what column those data uh, pieces of data are in. If someone's gone in and added columns or removed columns, um, as long as the data that you're looking for is still there and it has the correct headers, um, then it, you'll always bring it back. Um, so it's just like a 
a nice way to safeguard yourselves against any potential issues um, and I strongly recommend learning how to um, master the index match match functions. Um, so just to quickly summarize, um, index is uh, basically where you put in your array, okay? Uh, which is the data that you ultimately want to just bring back. Um, so you, the results, if you will, okay? Um, the first match function is always your rows, okay? And then the last part, which is the optional um, columns, okay? Um, three parts. Whereas it seems like it's quite a lot when you look at it like this, um, it really isn't. It's, as I say, it's not, I'd probably say it's intermediate, it's not basic, but it's not advanced um, Excel. It's it's just something that um, people need to get a little bit more comfortable with, uh, nesting formulas inside each other to get the results um, that you know, you're going to be able to guarantee and have faith in what you're creating. For various reasons. Um, so this is what it looks like, you know, so our array is right there, so it is basically our sheet with the sales and then everything that's inside it and that's our results, our results are going to be in there. The first match, which is that function in the middle, that says find our unique code within a column that it, that code sits, right? So that could be column Z, it could be column A. Uh, most unique IDs is column A, um, and that will always bring back your row number, okay? And then the very last part is your column number, and that's where we are looking for headers in the very first row of our say, uh, sales data. Um, it's important that we dollar in uh, an anchor, put the dollar signs and anchor in, all of the numbers in that point because as we copy the formulas down we don't want um, those numbers to change as we pull the formulas down right because um, that will just break the formula it won't work um, so it's important to just make note that you have to have um, all of your anchors and your dollar signs in the right places um, on this formula um, but that's it guys um, so if you um, like the video, please um, hit the like button. Subscribe if you'd like to learn more about Excel. I'm going to be uploading um, hopefully daily. And um, subscribe. Great. Thanks. I'll see you in the next one.